We asked Mackenzie, and she said, bad attitudes toward parents. So that puts the limit. You get grounded. You know, you won't be able to go places. And I, I thought of murmuring, complaining, caused God's wrath to come upon Israel. So they, there's a lot of things that limit us. The little word limit is a boundary, the farthest edge, where something ends or must end. To set a limit to, to restrict, to limit all, all you can stand. Limitation is a hinder, it's a handicap. What limits you? What does hinder you from obeying the truth? A hedge is a barrier, a limit, a boundary used for protection or defense. Hedge to, to surround in on all sides. Job says God put a hedge about him to protect him from Satan and from the evil one. Boy, I'd like to have a hedge about me. And I, I believe the psalm says, He that dwells in the shadow of the Almighty shall abide under the protection of God, the hedge of God. So you know it means something to have God on your side. It means something to be living in a way that God will, will hedge you in and hedge you out. What limits us to Moses, it was his anger. He was unstoppable. There was nothing his God could not do and would not do. Because out of anger, Moses smoked a rock twice or the second time, and it showed Moses' unbelief. God said, because you have disobeyed me, you shall not, not enter into the promised land. He said, you'll die in this wilderness. He said, you not, shall not go over to possess the land, but you can see it. And God had mercy on him. He got to, Moses got, went up on Mount Pisgah and could see the promised land afar off. So, you know, folks, it means something to have self-control. The, the, the Bible says, blessed or the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. The, the people that are tempered, the people with self-control. And, and also the Bible says, he that can bridle his tongue can control his whole body. Do we control our temper or does it control us? Do we let it make us look like a fool? Are we hasty with our words? So, you know, we, out of anger, it puts limits upon us. When we cannot control our anger and cannot control our words, then it will place limits upon us. Number two is fear, doubt, and unbelief. The children of Israel came back with an evil report. Said, we can't take the land. It's so big. It's too big for us. The giants, they, the, I mean, the giants are there. We look like grasshoppers to them. The fear of failure. A lot of times we won't start some say, well, what if I don't make it? Or what if, what if this don't happen? Or what if this don't work? Also, the fear of sacrifice. It costs too much. And I don't know about you, but you know, we'll sit around and think about what this will cost or what that will cost. You know, to have more than anointing. We, uh, Sister Margot charged the church family. Uh, she, uh, or not charged us, but challenged us. If we would pray an hour, you know, get up at five and pray to six an hour. And say she gets up at four a lot of times and she'll call her uncle. And they pray about an hour around four or five somewhere in there. They pray an hour. And uh, last Sunday, says she was up at three of praying and seeking God. And here toward, uh, you know, one o'clock there, she's, I guess, getting tired. But here she was. She went out all day. And then here it was about eight last, uh, Sunday night. And she's still going. She got that little energizer bunny rabbit, you know. And, but the fear of sacrifice. Folks, the, uh, brother, uh, brother Michael say it's, 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 it's free, but it ain't cheap. The fear of what if? What if God don't show up? What if God don't fight for us? We are in ourselves. You know, folks, we have to know the voice of God. But there's a fear, you know, Joyce Myers would say, do it afraid. There's things that we have to do afraid. I mean, even if we are afraid, even if our, our knees are shaking, we have to do it anyway. And you know, whether we're up or down, high or low, wet or dry, then we want to serve God. A little number three is rebellion rebellion. John went from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa, down to a ship, down in the ship. Uh, God caused a storm and he's thrown overboard. Then he went down into the water, down into the fish's mouth. And I mean, went down, down, down. He said, out of the belly of hell, I cried. So he went as far as he could go. But you know, God heard him. What has our rebellion against God caused us? Well, a friend of mine, uncle, Said for 18 years he rebelled against God. He run from God. Just think of all the souls could be one in 18 years, folks. You know, if you just won one, one, and just every now and then, just think of all the souls. What has our rebellion against God caused us? What kind of messes have we 
got ourselves into how much trouble have we caused on our friends or loved ones because we rebelled against God. I mean, folks, can you imagine? Not only does rebellion, not only does it limit us, but it also it causes trouble in our life. It causes trouble in our family, our children. You know, there, there are some kids that have been taken home because their parents were rebellious. They were running from God, and they wouldn't say, they wouldn't say yes to Jesus. Number four, pride, foolish pride. It says, a rich young ruler says, what must I do to be saved? What good work, what good deed? And Christ says, so I'll let you have and give to the poor and take up your cross and follow me. There, there are things that limit us, folks, and it could, would it be our money? Would it be our pride? Would it be our rebellion? 